Arab Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. This morning, we shared with you roughly uh, information, the or the video they had made of uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov and his comments that with uh, NATO's chief Jens Stoltenberg in the meeting in Munich, Germany, and very uh, tense situation. And although RT kind of uh, projected this information is more of a kind of a humorous tone with uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov. Uh, clearly it is not so much a humorous tone and we're going to get into that in just a moment with an article that RT has put out uh, that I think is very concerning and also kind of just to do a little look at what's going on around Europe around the world as well and the buildup of tensions that is clearly on the edge of a third world war if we're not already in that. Let's listen here uh, real quick again, Prime Minister Lavrov clearly identifying that NATO negotiates using force. I'm glad that NATO is still interested in talking to us. I look forward to discussing some practical things. But we are uh, strongly in favor of dialogue with Russia. I know, yeah. I know. And, uh, and, uh, From the position of force. Uh, from a predictable <laughs> and... Uh, now, if you notice, uh, Prime Minister Lavrov said from from a position of force. Uh, Jens Stoltenberg re, uh, came back, like I said, caught him off guard, and he said from a predictable position. Uh, that letting him know as well that yes, if it means force, we're willing to use force. Now, uh, as we begin to look on uh, an article by RT that was published today, Lavrov, NATO expansion led to tensions in Europe unprecedented in the last 30 years. I found it very interesting because uh, Pro Foreign Minister Lavrov did not make any uh, mincing of words in his uh, statements today uh, at this uh, meeting to NATO uh, here in Munich, Germany. And I think it's worth reading some of this information because it clearly set the stage and it also lets NATO know that Russia, although they're not looking for a confrontation, is not going to back down either. Uh, anyway, says NATO's expansion has led to an unprecedented level of tensions over the last 30 years in Europe. Judging by some statements made at the security conference, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said speaking in Munich. Um, uh, it was also stated here, we need to resume military cooperation. Uh, and yet NATO Secretary uh, General Jens Stoltenberg, surrounded by his deputies yesterday, couldn't say that NATO is ready for, it, uh, for this. It's sad, Lavrov said. So see, Russia is constantly reaching out a hand, trying to work again with, with uh, their European partners. That was part of the cooperation between the United States and Russia, that they would both cooperatively work together. Uh, is, and is what he's speaking about as far as military cooperation and the protection of the European Union. Russia is not looking uh, for conflicts with anyone, but will always be able to protect its interests, the diplomat also stated. What kind of relationship do we want with the U.S.? Uh, one, based on uh, pragm pragmatism, mutual respect, and understanding a special responsibility for global stability, he stated. Uh, citing a message from one of the most influential 19th century Russian diplomats to his American counterpart, which said that in any conflict, interests could be harmonized through justice and modesty. Lavrov said uh, the same approach could strengthen the modern world. Uh, another statement that was mentioned as well by uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov, if everyone adapts that approach, we could overcome the period of post-truth fast and resist information wars imposed on international community, he stated. Uh, he also stated, they say that all wars begin in the minds of people. And by this logic, that's where they are supposed to come to an end. However, this hasn't been the case with the Cold War yet. At least judging by some speeches of the politicians in Europe, uh, and in the U.S., including statements that were made yesterday and today and at the beginning of our conference, something that Lavrov noted uh, in, in these remarks here. He also um, stated here, a comment from Russia and the West to jointly provide security based on respect for each other's interests and enhance mutual trust, prevent a split in the Euro-Atlantic area, and to erase the dividing lines formed 
uh, the basis of these documents, the Russian foreign minister stated as well. The whole point of, of, of the conversation that we were able to, to ascertain in, in watching these, these statements by Foreign Minister Lavrov is that Russia is willing to work with NATO, with uh, the United States, uh, in particularly with President Trump, but at the same token, there is a lot of tone coming out of the United States, and I know he's pointing to John McCain and Senator Lindsey Graham, uh, as well as other in the Democratic side, and uh, of course, Republican as well, McCain being a Republican and not a Democrat, but uh, we see a major division in the United States government over how uh, the, the quote unquote issue with Russia should be handled. And even Europe, there's a major divide. We have those like uh, Miss Le Pen, who's running for president of France, who is strongly opposed uh, to all these sanctions against Russia and realizes that this is baseless to begin with. There are others uh, also in Germany that are a counter to that of Merkel. Uh, believing that the sanctions are completely uh, wrong to be done against uh, Russia. Uh, and, and then we have the other side of the coin. We have Merkel, we have Jens Stoltenberg, we have other leaders, um, uh, Mr. Holland in France, that are clearly uh, in favor of the sanctions and believing that Russia is the great aggressor uh, the, uh, of, the, of the situations that are going on inside of Ukraine. Clearly, this is not the case. We know for fact that, that Russia was not the one that instigated the, the, the Ukraine crisis. We know that Ukraine, the, 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 um, uh, the coup that began there was not orchestrated by Russia. However, uh, we do see that uh, the former president Yanukovych had invited Russia in to try to salvage the country, uh, even inviting them in found by the, the, uh, the, uh, the actual uh, Ukrainian um, uh, goodness, my brain, too many things at one time going on in my brain there. The, 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 the Ukrainian uh, prosecutor, state's prosecutor, found the document claiming uh, that Yanukovych had actually invited Russia in to help with the crisis inside the country. Now, Russia did uh, go after Crimea, but they did not do so with eastern Ukraine so much. But that's even changing now. After Foreign Minister Lavrov made uh, this meeting today in Munich, Germany, and yesterday in Munich, Germany, then we find out that the Kremlin has released an executive order recognizing documents issued to Ukrainian citizens and stateless persons living in certain districts of Ukraine's Donetsk and Luhansk regions. They are now accepting the marriage certificates, driver's license, uh, all types of documentations that is coming out of eastern Ukraine as if eastern Ukraine is indeed already uh, its own entity, its own separate government. Russia is now accepting these documents as legal and that is another step forward. Now Russia also said that uh, under Prime Minister, excuse me, Foreign Minister Lavrov that Russia will not lift sanctions on Europe either, tit for tat so to speak, until uh, the Minsk agreement is agreed upon. And after these meetings here, even with this executive order signed by President Putin today, uh, recognizing uh, all these documents inside of eastern Ukraine, they even were able to come to an agreement to bring back uh, the Minsk Agreement Accords, according to both sides, Germany, Russia, all agreed upon this. The NATO partners there, they have agreed to put pressure on Ukraine to pull back this heavy uh, armaments that are being used on the people of Donetsk and Luhansk regions there, all the way down to Maripol, all these uh, attacks that are being placed there to the, to the Ukrainian citizens to the eastern side of Ukraine that have also declared their independence from Ukraine itself. Uh, so Russia also agreeing to uh, pull the leverage on the Donetsk and Luhansk regions there to get them to back off as well. But the, our, our, really our point in bringing these things out with what Foreign Minister Lavrov is saying in the uh, Minsk agreements as well as in the Munich uh, conversations that we're seeing that are going on there is that Foreign Minister Lavrov clearly is showing the tense build up, the situations that are going on. And we see this even from continual movements of the United States military and whether or not it's President Trump authorizing these moves or if this is the military just making the moves because it's something that was already pre-planned, we're seeing things continue to move. Now the United States has moved military vehicles from California to Alaska, uh, something new that had just came up. Uh, another thing here that I wanted to share with you here, and pardon the music on that there, uh, this is a, 
a glimpse of war exercises going on with South Korea. Other nations were involved there. They're doing landing exercise with U.S. Marines there. No doubt getting ready to deal with North Korea. So it looks like at the very least, even if we don't see a world war break out with Russia and NATO, uh, which looks like we might be able to avert that. That's the good news of all of this. Looks like we might get to avert that. But clearly when it comes to North, uh, North Korea, that doesn't look like anything's backing down except that there's more than likely going to be an invasion there to topple the current regime and try to bring that under control. Uh, it looked like ants crawling along the beach there when we saw the soldiers that were coming out on there. Again, this was the U.S., Thai, and South Korean uh, Marines conducting amphibious assault drills on Hat Yao Beach in Sata Ship, Thailand. And also another one that I wanted to share with you, the U.S. Army soldiers, tanks, and M88 recovery vehicles from the 1st Battalion, 8th Infantry Regiment have arrived in uh, Koglin uh, Sinu Air Base in Romania. Again, more and more equipment still pouring into Romania. These are the type of things that make Russia uneasy. We already have it all through the Baltics, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. We have unbelievable amounts of troops in Poland, even troops in Norway on Russia's northern border. Uh, the United States has moved in the F-35s into Japan, which easily could be used for uh, situation with North Korea. But then again, it could be used for Russia as well if that's the way things were to turn. Now, Romania, we've been seeing the buildups with Romania more and more, faster and faster. Tanks, everything being moved there, troops, etc. So it makes for a majorly tense situation. And somebody has got to back off because if they don't, this could easily spiral out of control. Don't forget, Russia has their Zapad. Um, uh, war games coming up in Belarus in just a, a couple of months away. That being involving, at least last year, 120,000 Russian soldiers were involved in that particular exercise. That's bigger than what the U.S. has there already. So it's very concerning to see this type of equipment troop movement. Also, NATO, I believe, is planning an exercise right around the same time. If anybody flinches, anybody messes up during these exercises, things could explode and ignite very rapidly. And once that happens, it's not very easy to, 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 to cool off the, uh, the tempers at that point there. Anyway, so we hope for the best of all these things. And again, we're, it, it seems like that at least they're sitting down, they're negotiating, uh, although a very tense negotiations, but it does seem like that there could be some light at the end of the tunnel here, and maybe we can see some s simmering down of tensions. By the way, though, uh, Ukraine, there's supposed to be a ceasefire on Monday, uh, or at least I should say not so much a ceasefire, but a pulling back of the heavy weapons on Monday. But even as we speak, um, Ukraine has been heavily bombarding again Donetsk. And there was a uh, last word that we caught uh, actually on Mikhail's channel here is that they were planning an attack from three different directions. So Ukraine is trying to gain, gain uh, headway before they agree to anything on Monday. Very troubling situation in Ukraine. Uh, as I said, the, the gates of Europe are burning down. I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live.